Howdy everyone, David here. And uh, this is a video on the archetype for the Paladin, the Oathbreaker. And this is a brand new archetype that just came out in the Dungeon Master's Guide. It's on page 97. And this is basically a villain option in the creating a villain uh, section in the Dungeon Master's Guide. However, uh, if your DM allows you, you will, you will be able to play this as a class in your party. And it is basically, it is an evil alignment type of archetype. So if you're in a party with good players, I don't really recommend this. It could cause some havoc, but uh, it could definitely give you some good flavor. But if you're playing an all evil game, uh, this would be right up your alley, especially with the other, uh, the Cleric Death Domain also. So, uh, as you know, the Paladin gets to choose their archetype at level 3. They're one of the, the classes that have to wait till 3. A lot of the other classes get to choose their archetype at level 1 or level 2. Uh, so, uh, you can do two things. Uh, if your DM allows you to, you can start as an Oathbreaker at level 3. Or, if you already have your Oath, like Oath of Devotion, uh, then you would have to break your alignment and change to the Oath Breaker, and that would give you your title, Oath Breaker. There are some optional rules down here in the bottom right on page 97 that actually give you the the rules for changing your alignment. Well, they're not actually rules, but uh, it, it is ultimately up to the DM if he wants to have you do some kind of trial or some kind of quest to be able to, you know, so you'd be able to actually break your alignment and become an Oath Breaker. So there's some optional stuff down here for you. Nice little, a good little nice read. So first off, the Oathbreaker is basically is a paladin who breaks his or her sacred oath to pursue some dark ambition or serve an evil power. Whenever light burned in the whatever light burned in the paladin's heart has long been extinguished. Only darkness remains now. A paladin must be evil and at least level three to become an Oathbreaker. The Paladin replaces the features specific to his or her Sacred Oath with the new Oathbreaker features. So, uh, along with all the other Paladin archetypes, you are going to get some, basically, Oath spells. And these Oath spells are down here. Let's go ahead and zoom in so you guys can actually see this stuff. Now, these spells are basically free spells that you do not have to memorize. Meaning your daily allotment of spells that you have to memorize. This is not part of that. So if you have four or five spells a day, then all of these are going to be extra that you're going to get to cast as well. So at level 3, you're going to get to cast Hellish Rebuke and Inflict Wounds. Level 5, you're going to get the Crown of Madness and Darkness. Level 9, you're going to get Animate Dead, Bestow Curse. Level 13, you're going to get Blight and Confusion. And lastly, at level 17, you're going to get Contagion and Dominate Person. So, at level 3, you're also going to get to choose... Well, you're not going to get to choose, but you're going to get to uh, get two Channel Divinity features. The first one is going to be Control and Dead and it's this feature here. And control undead, uh, as an action, the paladin can target one undead creature he or she can see within 30 feet of him or her. The target must make a wisdom saving throw against your DC, your save DC, and on a failed save, the target must obey the paladin's commands for the next 24 hours, or until the paladin uses the channel divinity option again as undead whose challenge rating here's here's the here's the real thing though an undead whose challenge rating is equal to or greater than the paladin's level is immune to this effect so that's a, a nice little thing that they added in so you could not take advantage of you know getting lucky on like a lich uh, f you know failing your saving throw so i do like that that they added in at the end uh, the second channel divinity that the Oathbreaker is going to get is called Dreadful Aspect. 
and as an action the paladin channels the darkness the darkest emotions and focuses them into a burst of magical menace each creature of the paladin's choice within 30 feet of the paladin must make a wisdom saving throw if it can see the paladin on a failed save the target is frightened of the paladin for one minute if a creature frightened by this effect ends its turn more than thirty feet away from the paladin it can attempt another wisdom saving throw to end the effect on it so basically what this translates to is this whenever you use your action to cast this dreadful aspect everybody within thirty feet has to make that saving throw if they fail it they're frightened they have to get as far away from you as possible that's what the frightened condition does now if one of those creatures at the end of its turn is still within the 30 foot radius of you it of course it will be facing away because it will be frightened and it will try to continue to get away from you next round it will be allowed to do another wisdom saving throw and then you know if it makes it then it wouldn't be frightened of you anymore then it can turn around regain its senses and attack the paladin so that is what dreadful aspect does really nice uh, channel divinity now at level seven the paladin oathbreaker will get aura of hate and aura of hate is starting at seventh level the paladin as well as well any fiends and undead within 10 feet of the paladin gains a bonus to melee weapon damage rolls against basically rolls equal to the paladin's charisma modifier with a minimum of plus one a creature can benefit from this feature from only one paladin at a time and then at 18th level the range of this aura increase, increases to 30 feet so what this does is you or any basically if you have an undead that you are controlling and it's within 10 feet of you it'll gain a bonus to melee weapon damage that's if it's using a melee weapon attack it has to be using a melee weapon to you know receive that benefit and then it has the the charisma modifier bonus and then at level 18 that 10 foot range goes to 30 feet which is actually a, a really significant boost all right, so now, uh, after level 7, Aura of Hate, you are going to get uh, level 15, you're going to get Supernatural Resistance. This is really, really, really nice. So, starting at 15th level, the Paladin gains resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical weapons. Now, how this translates to is like this. Uh, if you take 28 points of piercing damage say if you got 28 points something uh, someone attacked you and got sneak attack did 28 points then with your supernatural resistance resistance means you only take half damage so that means that you'll take 14 instead of 28 now if they're using at least a plus one magical weapon then or a magical weapon then you're gonna take the full 28 damage so there you go that's supernatural resistance now at level 20 you're gonna get dreadlord and this is a really really nice uh, feature for this archetype so at level 20 the paladin can as an action surround himself or herself with an aura of gloom that lasts for one minute the aura reduces any blight light bright light in a 30 foot radius around the paladin to dim light so what that's doing is taking that bright light making it dim light a little bit harder to see now whenever an enemy that is frightened by the paladin starts his turn in the aura it will take 4d10 psychic damage so basically if you used your channel divinity uh, dreadful aspect uh, if you have you know multiple at, uh, you, at level 20 you will have multiple attacks you'll be able to do dreadlord and everything within that aura will take 40 10 psychic damage that's that's really nice uh, additionally the paladin and creatures he or she chooses in the aura are draped in deeper shadow creatures that rely on sight have disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures draped in the shadow so whatever creatures you choose within this aura they are going to get basically the the creatures attacking them all of the creatures that you choose will get disadvantage on their attacks 
really 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 nice uh, also while the aura lasts the paladin can use a bonus action on his or her turn to cause the shadows in the aura to attack one creature the paladin makes a melee spell attack against the target and if the attack hits the target takes necrotic damage equal to 3d10 plus the paladin's charisma modifier really nice that's a nice bonus action and then after activating the aura the paladin can't do so again until he or she fi finishes a long rest really nice dreadlord does multiple things it's really nice so this is everything that the the new archetype of the Oathbreaker has to offer for the Paladin class. I think it's a uh, a really nice archetype. I think it was put together nicely. I enjoy all of the, the, the Oath spells that they get. And also, take a look at these optional Oathbreaker atonement rules. If you're going to, you, you know, you can be over level 3. So, I mean, if you're a, a level 10 Oath of Devotion Paladin, you have that option. As long as your Dungeon Master allows you to, to break your alignment and do some kind of trial, maybe, to actually get your Oathbreaker archetype. So, there you go. That is the Oathbreaker Paladin. And I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And until next time, good gaming.